Hello guys, welcome to the Wednesday trade recap and forecast. So we're starting with our first pair, which is the euro and the US dollar as usual. We did have some activity on the dollar pairs. Uh, Japanese pairs have been a bit sleepy, but still we're gonna cover those as well. Let's first see what the euro and the US dollar has been doing. So it has been very corrective in this general area, as you can spot it right here. Lots of volatility, lots of corrective movement. But then we did get this leg to the downside right here, strong leg down, a bit of a descending channel and then another push to the downside. So at this point I was looking for a sell setup. This did look good to me, again this was a bit of a slowdown but momentum clearly kicked back in and continued. So we did not unfortunately get any setups, instead we broke the low. And then we got a potential break and retest. So I did have my order on right here with the sell limit with a 13 pip stop loss. And that was a very good opportunity. Again, I saw a nice downtrend, no real bullish pressure. So a bit of a descending channel. But what I know is that usually Euro US dollar can continue from these uh, formations. So I did have my order on, on the low of the inside bar. And then price did almost tag me in, but moved too far away at this point. So I did not get tagged into this setup. At this point, it was, it was too far from the entry level. And the entry would then show me a clear shift in momentum. So I did stay out of, of that one. And then what happened? Well, basically, at this point, I was looking for another entry setup. Okay, because it was still in a downtrend and I was still seeing a lot of bearish pressure. But in these legs, I started to see bullish pressure kick back in. So at that point, I no longer wanted to look for a setup. If I'm looking to sell, I don't, I don't want to see any major buying pressure. And in these three candles, I did see a lot of buying pressure personally. And then basically price created a flag, created a break and retest as well. So here was the flag entry. This would also be tagging in for a break and retest. But again, didn't fit my plan anymore because I saw bullish pressure start to kick in. Broke the high retraced, broke the low retraced, and now we're just kind of ranging in this general area. So took no trades on the euro and the US dollar. And again, we are now flat in this area. What I'm looking for is for the price to move away. Again, we, are st we have started to see a bit of movement. I did like this leg very much. This was a very nice leg of bearish pressure so that was nice but unfortunately it just started to range around right here so yeah since i'm a trend trader for now using only trend trading entries this to me is too flat and i'm being more patient for this particular pair we are now starting to see some possibly like an ascending channel right here but it's very corrective and it's not really a clean ascending channel and it's a very small one as well. So not seeing any high probability price action on that one. So not on the watch list. Euro Japanese Yen. So we did have some action happen last week. Right here. I was looking for possibly some buy setups to form because I saw a descending channel after which I expect the price to reverse in the opposite direction. Also, overall, this was definitely in a larger, more corrective, but still technically a descending channel. So I did ex expect an uptrend to start, but no high probability entries actually formed. Again, this candle printed with a huge wick on the top. And then we got major selling pressure, pressure after the huge wick and then we just started Kind of being corrective so yeah after the major after the huge wick or the large wick and the major selling pressure i was no longer interested we did then form an ascending channel after which i expected the price to reverse uh to the downside so it was a clean one one two three four five six seven eight consecutive breaks of the high so that is usually a very very high probability scenario euro japanese yen if you see an ascending or descending channel and you see price consecutively breaking the highs or consecutively breaking the lows, well, it's a clear indication that a trend in the opposite direction is very, very likely to happen. Okay, so very, very likely to happen that a trend in the opposite direction will occur. And then what happened? Well, basically price 
kind of descended from there. So no real entries formed, no major selling pressure actually formed. What I was looking for is of course some nice large bearish legs. So yeah, I was looking for a strong momentum down, something like this, and then for a flag or for a break and a retest like this. As you can see, that didn't happen. Instead, price just started moving from an ascending channel into a descending channel. So that's corrective. That signals more range bound price action, as you can see. And yeah, not looking good right now. I'm expecting a wider range, to be honest. So price is kind of still overall stuck in this channel. If you connect these bottoms and tops as well. Again, still kind of stuck in this formation. So I want to look for a strong impulse or the price to clean up. I want to look for like a strong push up or a strong push down. And current price action is not looking high probability. Maybe we can form a nice cleaner descending and then a reversal or form a nice ascending and then a reversal down so let's see i mean this is not on the watch list we still have today thursday and friday for the setups to form again wednesdays thursdays and fridays are trending days usually they are most active days they have a lot of news events as well so i would not be surprised if we potentially start an uptrend or a downtrend but for now being more patient with the euro and the japanese yen aussie was dollar i did take a setup here okay so I did take a break and retest setup. What I was seeing it was last week and it was on, on a Thursday. I was seeing a V reversal after which I expect a range, which you have here. And I expect the trend down to start. Again, we got the V, not the cleanest. Okay, not the cleanest V reversals. When I want to see a clean, this one is a clean V reversal. This one is much cleaner, I would say. See this one. Similar momentum going up, similar momentum going down, but this is still technically a V reversal, nevertheless. V reversal, small range, push down, very strong push down, one candle pullback, no bullish pressure, break of the low, strong break, clean close. These setups on the Aussie US dollar usually have a very, very high win rate, very, very high probability, a very, very high uh, percentage when they do end up being a winner, especially this formation right here the strong leg the, the one candle pullback and then the break of the low with force and with a clean close as well i love these setups on the aussie us dollar they are really really nice triple wicks here yes triple large wicks warning sign but because prior price action had the v it had the established downtrend i was willing to ignore this warning sign right here and it was thursday thursdays i like the best to take trades so on thursdays i'm usually also more lenient with take with uh, kind of ignoring the warning signs. So this fit my plan 100%, 10 out of 10 setup. Okay, maybe a 9 out of 10 because of this, these wigs, but still, on a large sample size, definitely worth taking. Got tagged in and then got tagged out for a 1% loss. Okay. View reversal. This one is a clean view reversal as well. Right, this is what I want to look for when I say V reversal but we just continued being volatile and range bound right here then we broke down and then we kind of descended but very correctively see printing wicks huge wick kind of corrective breaking the highs as well so i would say this is now flat okay this is now flat range bound i'm not seeing much potential in this price action what i'm looking for is for the price to clean up give me a large push up or give me a large impulse down but as you can see we did get some opportunities on the dollar pairs we did get some uh, momentum going down so that's a good sign maybe price will start to clean up maybe we'll start getting some nice high probability setups moving on aussie japanese yen let's see where the last week's recap was around here broke down Yes, I was looking to get in somewhere on this downtrend. This was a very nice leg. So even the Japanese pairs had some potential, right? So look at this leg, a little bit of a pause, then another leg to the downside as well. Then momentum started shifting up a little bit. At this point, I no longer wanted to take a sell. This was, this was a lot of bullish pressure. 
Broke the low, retraced, not a big break, so not, wasn't looking for a break and retest. Yeah, it kind of fizzled out on the bottom, okay? So I didn't see any high probability entry uh, entry points for me to, to enter a sell setup right here, but I was definitely interested because I was seeing some nice strong potential in this in these two legs right here definitely strong uh, bearish pressure pushed up pushed up again this was nfp and now we're just ranging around between the high and the low again i did not look for any setups here because i was not trading nfp friday i usually stop trading uh so maybe one two three a.m on nfp friday is my cut of time what i found most trades that i take on nfp friday they usually end up ranging around right uh, before NFP. So this usually happens. I may get in on a buy setup here or here somewhere, maybe if there's a break and retest. And then price just starts ranging around and then NFP hits. So the spreads expand, the volatility gets high. This, I believe, is an NFP candle. See, it's a large one. And I usually get taken out for even more than I initially risked because the spreads expand, the volatility expands as well. The markets become erratic. For me, it's just not worth it, worth taking a setup according to my live training experience. So in my back testing, you, you really cannot see all of the spreads. But in the last two years of live training experience, I definitely got burned more times on NFP Friday than I actually got a profit. I don't think I ever made a good profit um, when, when taking a trade right before uh, NFP on a Friday. Okay, maybe once, but like five or six times I got burned and price just started ranging around and it was not worth for me looking for a setup so my cut of time is around one to maybe three uh, a.m on nfp friday okay so this pair is flat this pair is a range bound i'm expecting more range bound price action and definitely we need to be careful of these liquidity areas above and below the range okay definitely need to be careful <clears throat> we need to see a strong breakout or a strong break down don't get in on the first candle look for the price to continue with the second candle preferably even continue with the third candle as well because the first candle usually fails because these areas are full of liquidity why are they full of liquidity well because the traders trading the lower time frames are selling here selling here selling here okay quick lesson here here selling here maybe even here where they keep their stops i would say right above this high somewhere in this box okay so these areas are full of stop losses and price can easily penetrate into the area and then reject same thing goes to the downside so people buying the bottom of the range here here maybe here stops maybe somewhere in these areas below this low okay so this is a liquid area as well you need to be careful when the price penetrates into these areas so being more careful not on the watch list being more patient looking for that strong breakup or a strong breakdown on the aussie and the japanese yen pound us dollar i did take a setup on the pound as well uh wednesday was here corrective 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 I was maybe looking for a, a break and retest at this point, okay, if the price broke up with momentum because I was seeing a descending channel and then strong momentum up, that didn't happen, okay, instead we got major selling pressure, right, so a continuation never occurred. And then we just went volatile and corrective. This is a clean view reversal. If you want to have an example of a clean view reversal, screenshot this, put it in your gallery or in your trade plan. Okay, and then we got a nice downtrend. Nice, nice downtrend right here. Very strong. These are the legs I'm looking for on the pound US dollar. Look at the size of this leg. Look at the size of this leg as well. This is a small pause before the price actually continues down no major buying pressure so not a concern momentum kicks back in kicks yeah kicks back into the market and in this strong established downtrend i'm very very interested to take sell setups okay let me just check something okay so what happened a entry did form a flag did form right here okay this is the flag entry candle is the red one 
right? First high, first low, or sorry, first low, first high, second low, second high. Red candle is the entry candle. Now at Zentum Trading, we do have a refinement uh, where we take these flags in a bit of a different way, which increases the win rate, increases the overall percentage as well, and helps you to stay in most of these, uh, most of these pound flags and so for some other pairs as well. So I'm not going to go into this refinement uh, because that is private for Zentum traders, but I didn't take it on the classic entry. I took it uh, on a different refined entry. Okay, so it, it was still a loss. Okay, it was still a loss this time, but I did take it um, a bit later. If you want to know more about this entry, definitely join Zentum trading. We have all of the data, all of the statistics, all of the backtesting data to, to back up our claims. And you can clear, clearly see in the backtesting that this timed entry it produces a better win rate and much more percentage for these flags in the long run. Okay, so very interesting. If you want to learn more, join ZentumTrading.com. So yeah, took it a bit later, got stopped out. Uh, it was a 1% loss, but it was perfect. Okay, perfect setup, absolutely great. This flag is textbook. It's a 10 out of 10. I don't see anything wrong with this. Strong bearish leg. Look at the size of the, the bearish bodies. Look at the size of these bearish candles. And another clear indication of a strong selling pressure. Clean close, clean close, clean close, clean close. So no wick. No, almost no wick on the end of the candles, which is a very, very high probability sign. This breakup doesn't matter. There's no major buying pressure. And then this flag, absolutely low buying pressure, very clean flag. This is one of the cleanest flags I have seen. Okay, so this looks very, very clean. I was very happy to raise the 1%. Even the impulse ended with a clean close. So just a barely small wick, which is another positive sign. If you took this trade, congratulations, it was a great one. This time it was a loss. Again, not every single great 10 out of 10 trade will be a winner. That's trading. That's why trading is hard because even your best setups will sometimes lose. Trading is probabilities. Again, we don't look at trading on a weekly, monthly, even on a quarterly basis. We look at our profits on a yearly basis. If in one year we manage to make great profits, well, then you're definitely doing something good. But if you took one loss, two losses, three losses, maybe even four losses in a row, look, it's part of the probabilities. That month is maybe more corrective, maybe more range bound, but you need to take the losses to get to the winners. Our winners are far bigger than the losses. So in the long run, if you keep taking the losses, keep taking the winners, you're going to make a lot of profit because the winners can be five times, eight times, 10 times, 15 times bigger than your losers. Okay, I risk 1% for every single trade. So my losers are maximum 1%, but my, my winners, I think my average risk to reward for a winner is like 8%. Okay, so something like that. I have to recheck the data, but it used to be around 8% that my average winner um the size of my average winner so i need to take one winner to to um to pay for eight losses i just need one winner to pay for eight consecutive losses that's how it works okay works on a large enough sample size it's all about the probabilities and that's why most people quit they don't want to take the losses to get to the winners they only want to take the winners which is not realistic and that's not how this game works Current price action, price moved up, trickled up, ascended slowly to the upside, broke the high, retraced. Okay, now it's range bound in this area. On the pound, I'm looking for large push up. Oh, oh. Just a second, having some technical difficulties <laughs> or a large push down. I'm looking for this. I want to see this, this leg right here. This was a perfect leg that you want to see on the pound US dollar. Look at the size of it. Look at the candles. Clean close, clean close, clean close, clean close. Absolutely awesome. That's what I want to see again on the pound. Currently not on the watch list. New Zealand Japanese yen, let's identify last Wednesday. It was around here. At this point, I was very interested to look for sell setups. Unfortunately, no high probability entry scenarios formed. It was a uh, downtrend with a break of structure, but no major buying pressure. Momentum kicked back in. Bit of a shift. Broke the low, retraced. So no valid, no high probability entries formed. Okay. No flags, no break and retest that fit my plan. 
Here there was an opportunity for a break and retest. For me personally, it was NFP. Okay, it was right after my cut of time around three in the morning on NFP Friday. Would I take it if it was not NFP Friday? I don't think so, because this to me was still kind of stuck in this view reversal overall. So even if it wasn't NFP Friday, I don't think I will be taking this trade. The momentum here is a bit slow, it's a bit small, so it looks to be slowing down a little bit. But technically this was in an established option because we saw push up, pull back, push, pull back, push, and no real shift in the pullbacks either. What I was just worried, or I would be worried if it wasn't NFP Friday, was this thing being in like a V reversal, so I would then expect like a range to happen here. Or this is a cup and handle look. V reversal, cup and handle, same thing, different name. Cup, handle. Okay, you can even add in a head and shoulders, an inverse head and shoulders. So this would be like the left shoulder, head, and then you have the right shoulder, and then this goes to the upside. Okay, so it's all the same thing. All of the traders are trading very, very similar setups, very similar patterns, but different names. Okay, so if you really look at it, it's going to be the same thing. Break and retest flag, um, liquidity zones, liquidity sweeps. Cup and handles, V reversals, head and shoulders, all traders use the same thing. The technicals are not the problem. It is the psychology and sticking through the losing periods. That is where the real issues come up. Then we were range bound. We were flat in this area. Okay, very flat. Me as a trend trader, I don't want to touch this price action. Maybe if I had a liquidity uh, or I had a range bound entry, this would be nice. Bu buying the bottom, selling the top. And then we broke out of the range a little bit, but not with, with conviction. So this pair, not on the watch list, looking for more, looking for bullish pressure or looking for strong bearish pressure as well. Okay, I want to see a leg like this happen. This was a very good example of the bearish pressure I want to see. Look at this leg. Very, very strong. Clean close, clean close, clean close, clean close. So almost no wick on the bottom of the, this move, which is a great positive confluence for the trend to continue down this time it didn't it's part of the probabilities what you're gonna do so that's it none of the pairs are currently on the watch list but it is only wednesday okay we still have rest of wednesday thursday friday maybe setups will form we have some news events as well let's see if a trend happens let's see if we get large moves like this one then i'll be very interested to look for buy or sell setups that's it have a great rest of the week and i will see you guys in the next video